Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can see me and hear me well. Um, so a very warm good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Hannah Sweet, and I'm a climate change expert with the Initiative for Climate Action Transparency, or ICAT. Um, and it's really great to have you joining us today for this webinar to launch the newly developed ICAT Transformational Change Toolkit. So just before we begin, a quick note on some of the practical aspects of this webinar. Um, as you may already have noticed, you are muted and with your camera off. Um, so if you do have any questions, comments, or you'd like to get in touch with us um, at any time during the webinar, um, you can do that through the Q&A function that you should be able to see at the bottom of your screen. So that's just the Q&A um, button at the bottom. Uh, so you just click on that button and you can submit comments and questions to us uh, throughout the duration of the webinar. Um, and also a quick note on interpretation. So this webinar will only be available in English um, and there's no interpretation option. So some of you might see um, something that indicates interpretation on your Zoom platforms, but uh, just to clarify that we um, are not making an interpretation, a, a formal interpretation available uh, for this webinar. So in terms of our agenda for today, um, as you can see, we have a full agenda uh, for the next one and a half hours, um, which I think is really testament to all the great functions that this toolkit offers. And also uh, because this toolkit was developed as a collaborative effort involving several different organizations and agencies. Um, so to start with, there, are, uh, there will be some opening words by Henning Wooster, uh, the director of ICAT. This will be followed by the first presentation, which will give an introduction and overview to the toolkit. Uh, there will then be um, a few minutes, uh, a quick opportunity to answer some initial questions um, before we hear presentations on each of the different tools um, that are within the toolkit. So this will look in greater depth at uh, the general and portfolio tools, the carbon market tool and the investment tool. Um, following this, there will be a detailed presentation on the software interface of the toolkit, um, and we'll also hear some country experiences um, from applying the toolkit. And finally, after these presentations, there'll also be more time uh, for questions and discussion. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Henning to start off this webinar. Henning, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Hannah, and a warm welcome also from my side. Uh, very pleased um, that we are able to launch this transformational change toolkit today and uh, happy that you are joining us for this webinar. I will want to give you a little bit of background on the uh, toolkit uh, and before coming to the toolkit itself, let me talk about transformational change. Why do we need to consider transformational change? Transformational change is clearly central to tackling the global cli climate crisis. Meeting global climate objectives requires profound shifts in how economies operate, decarbonizing consumption and production, building resilience and ensuring sustainability. As you will all know, the Paris Agreement is currently not on track to achieving its objectives. Policies and actions are inadequate. Attention is hence urgently needed to ensure that policies and actions are truly transformative. Transformational change is essential for addressing climate change and for achieving sustainable development effectively. Without systematic change, the two degree target, let alone 1.5, will be unattainable and climate impacts would be unbearable without transformational efforts in adaptation. Such transformational change involves fundamental radical changes across all sectors. It entails systematic change that is sustained over time, engaging actors across all levels of society. It requires actions from governments, businesses, communities, and individuals. Evaluating climate actions for their transformational impacts is crucial to ensure that the world gets back on track. Again, this needs to happen at every level for national policies, subnational measures, or private sector projects. And it needs to be done 
at the design stage before preparing policies or projects and ex post when evaluating impacts. Thorough assessments provide valuable insights, helping policymakers, investors, and other stakeholders understand the depths and breadth of impact of their actions and course correct as needed. So why do we need a transformational change toolkit? In 2015, after the adoption of the Paris Agreement, ICAT initiated work on a methodology to assess the transformational change impact of policies and actions. The transformational change methodology was released in 2018 as part of a comprehensive series of 10 policy assessment guides, which are all freely available on our website. The guides are complementary and several methodologies should be applied in combination to assess the impacts of policies and actions. The transformational change methodology has already been used in many countries, including Argentina, Costa Rica, Nigeria, Sri Lanka, and Trinidad and Tobago. There has been a growing demand from governments and from non-state actors to expand the coverage of this methodology and make it more accessible for independent assessments. In response, we developed a software-based toolkit, the Transformational Change Toolkit, that we are launching here today. As part of the expansion, the applicability of the transformational change methodology has been expanded to now also cover adaptation. And it has been expanded to offer tools to facilitate assessing the impacts of actions for carbon market projects and in the context of ensuring ambition for climate finance. Several financial institutions, including important ones like the Green Climate Fund or the Climate Investment Funds, require projects to be transformational. And this toolkit allows uh, checking and test and documenting the transformational change impact of uh, projects as they are prepared. The toolkit is designed to simplify the assessment process making it easier to conduct thorough evaluations. It includes detailed guidance and resources like embedded how-to videos and automated report generation to help users conduct these critical assessments and use their results. I invite you to explore our website and investigate the Transformational Change Toolkit and also look at ICAT's other policy assessment guides. By embracing transformational change and leveraging our new toolkit, you can play a pivotal role in bringing the Paris Agreement back on track and shaping a sustainable future. Together, we can achieve profound and lasting impact. So let me end by thanking our partners, the UNEP Copenhagen Climate Center, Climate SI from Sri Lanka, perspectives and carbon limits for all the work that they have done in preparing the toolkit. And also thanks to the Vietnam Energy and Environment Consultancy for the case study conducted. And of course, to all of them for their participation in the webinar and for you, to you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Henning. And I think um, really importantly, highlighting the urgency for transformational change, uh, which really lays, I think, the foundation for um, the development and why we um, this, developed this um, transformational change toolkit. Um, and I think that set the scene well then for the first presentation, um, which will give an overview and introduction to the toolkit. Uh, so for this presentation, I'm really pleased to introduce Karen Olson, who is a Senior Advisor and Carbon Market Coordinator at the UNEP Copenhagen Climate Centre, or UNEP CCC, um, and Budika Hemashanta, um, Director of Climate SI. Um, and just another reminder, if you have a question for Karen or Budika throughout the presentation, please um, feel free to write that into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So Karen and Budika, over to you. Thanks, Hannah. And good morning uh, or good evening 
to those joining us. Um, as you heard, my um, I'm from Unit Copenhagen Climate Center, and I have been with the ICAT initiative since it started, leading development of the transformational change uh, methodology together with the World Resources Institute. And knowing that this is a new concept to many, some would say it's a bit fluffy. Um, what exactly is transformational change? How do we assess it? Um, we, as Henning explained, thought it would be useful to, to have this toolkit to, um, to make it easier to use. But I'll, in this overview, I will tell you more about what is the background of the methodology, particularly what ideas in terms of the theories and methodologies coming from sustainability transition uh, thinking from, from research. So how to translate that thinking into something other rational for those not active in research, but exactly for these different uses, uh, the governments, carbon market uh, actors and investors. So if we go starting with the definition, this is um, almost the same. We base this toolkit very closely on the ICAT methodology, but we also did uh, an update uh, to the definition to make it more comprehensive. And um, it reads like this. It's a fundamental sustained change of a system. And here system is a part of society. It could be national level, it could be sectoral level, system level, you define it as a user, setting the boundaries around what is it you want to transform. But it's this change of a system that disrupts, establish unsustainable carbon intensive practices and or leads to a sustained reduction in vulnerability, contributing to a zero carbon climate resilient society in line with the global goals. The Paris Agreement, 1.5 degree, uh, the global goal on adaptation and the UN sustainable global sustainable development goals. So from this definition, we've unpacked it and you'll see how we've done that. But first, the bigger picture, what, what do we mean about trans, what is transformation over time? Um, in relation to the SDGs by 2030. And if we look to 2050, we're also going to absolute approaches to sustainability impact assessment, uh, respecting planetary, planetary boundaries, um, earth system boundaries. And you see that at the top level, we are already overshooting as we are for climate change, but also overshooting, it's, it's not sustainable. Whereas the inner circle coming from the Kate Rowworth donut economy, it, it allows assessing uh, the social foundation in terms of um, dimensions of socioeconomic um, sustainability. And this is the, the, it shows the pathway to net zero. We want to achieve it by 2050, but it's not a climate first or climate only approach. We're not just assessing GHG emission reductions. We're doing it in the context of the SDGs. Taking a whole of society approach, which is why achieving climate and sustainable development goals for transformation, it's equally important, you can say. So next slide. Mm -hmm. This shows the phases of transformation. So systems, and if we here look at countries, um, many developing countries are still at a pre-development or take-off stage, take stage, pioneering new technologies uh, and, and creating the, the momentum in the takeoff phase. Why is this necessary? Facing out uh, fossil fuels. And in the acceleration stage, and if I take the example of Denmark, where I come from in Copenhagen, we're currently at the acceleration stage, having around 70% of, of uh, our energy coming from renewables, aiming for 100% in the stabilization phase. And you see that the dotted lines represent the risks of relapse. So sometimes when governments change or the mayor changes in a city, 
there's a change of policy and you could sort of slide backwards in terms of the degree of system change. But attributes of transformational change, it's very much at multiple levels. It's not just at activity level, even though the, the tool is for assessing activities, but the transformational impact is how does it change the system with regards to the, the, the characteristics of transformational change that, that we will then as, assess. It's a fundamental change. It, is, it establishes, yeah, and I think you heard that. It, it sort of disrupts status quo. But the concepts from the methodology is that we define impact for transformational change, the impact of transformation, as a combination of climate and SDG outcomes at scale and sustain. And the other dimension is the processes of change, how to get there, both in terms of the drivers, new technologies, incentives, economic, policy-wise agents, the pioneers, um, the social movements, and also the norms realizing, as in the, the, the um, pre-development takeoff phase, well, something's wrong. We need to change the norms and not depend on the, the fossil fuels, but move towards sustainability. So we assess those categories of change. And in the next slide, we go a step deeper. So this is all about unpacking this definition of transformational impact that I just read. And then in the assessment, we also go to the characteristic level, such as for technology, um, well, we need research and development. When we have new technologies, we have to adopt them and scale them. And I, I won't go into all the characteristics for all the categories, but you'll see it in the assessment, in the tool. Um, but for the outcomes, we it's a qualitative assessment. You um, you can, below the characteristic level, you can add indicators to make it a more quantitative assessment. We haven't done that because it's, it's a complex assessment demanding even at a qualitative assessment level. So this is a structured assessment according to these characteristics. But at the outcome level, we see, for instance, scale of outcome. We measure it as, so the system change is at micro, medium, macro and also the sustained nature. What can you achieve with your uh, climate action? Can you achieve short-term, medium-term, or long-term changes? And for to be transformational, of course you start short-term, but you also need a vision and a plan to ensure that you, the, the change of system is, is long-term lasting. So next. So to the toolkit, the goals, Henning already explained, it's about making it more applicable and accessible for, us, for the assessment and the tools that we, we have developed. It's, it's a generic tool, the general one that goes for all and it covers all NDC policies and actions. And then the new thing, with, which is not in the methodology, is that it in the portfolio tool, it enables aggregation of the, the, the impacts, comparison of the, the characteristics ac across a portfolio. And also how um, the portfolio aligns to, to national goals, um, such as NDC goals and SDG goals. And then we have the, the carbon market tool and the investment tool for more uh, targeted user groups, project developers for carbon markets, financial institutions, private sector, for considerations of investments. And you'll hear more about that uh, after. Pratika talks about the, the IT um, aspect of the toolkit. This is it for me. Yeah, hello. <clears throat> Um, good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you connect. So I think as uh, Henning mentioned, <clears throat> Transfer Change Toolkit is going to help uh, countries and in individual institutions to, you know, uh, measure the impact of uh, climate impact of and the SD impact of uh, various uh, climate actions. And as Karen mentioned, actually, this is, uh, as you might have seen, this is a 
complex uh, concept and it is well well written and the methodology is really reflecting and you all know that uh, when you or the climate fund uh, when they are going with certain requirements always uh, there are many requirements are embedded and so many methodologies very complex right sometimes preparing this documentation is going to take more time than accessing the finance right so now as Henning also mentioned the idea here is actually to simplify right to take all the complexities in the methodology all the complexities in the requirement uh, to the tool by the tool and then give some flexibility to you you don't have to you know worry too much you know it is simplified and you can simply use the tool and generate the transfer impact of any action for example country where i come from we have around 25000 megawatt wind power potential in sri lanka but right now we have tap only 500 megawatt so we know that we can go to 25,000, but how we get there, what changes we need to do and how it will impact on climate, how it will align with the SDGs. So this is something that we can look at uh, using this transformative change toolkit. Next slide, please. Yeah, so as I mentioned to you, the whole idea of this software, the web-based tool is actually get the complexities from the tool, in, uh, from the methodologies into the tool and get the complexity in the requirement into the tool and then give you something simplified version so that you can easily measure the, the transformation impact of climate and the SDG alignment easily. So this uh, in the web tool actually, uh, everything is automated as Karen mentioned, actually we have, a, we are not going for the quantity uh, analysis, we are going for sort of qualitative analysis, but it's still it's automated. And the tool is free to use. It can be used by countries. It can be used by individuals. It can be used by institutions. Like Henning mentioned that Green Climate Fund, Climate Investment Fund, or various uh, banks, multilateral banks. This can be a good tool to measure the transfer of change impact. And then um, it, when you do assessment, actually, you can do the assessment halfway. Uh, as uh, Karen also mentioned, there are many requirements, actually then you can complete it later. So that is possible and you, you can, it will automatically save your assessment. And once you complete the assessment, actually results is generated uh, on the screen and you have a real time dashboard with the dynamic graphs actually, you can immediately see the results uh, of, the, of the transformational change impact and also alignment with the SDGs and other inputs that you have embedded. You can also generate reports as Henning also mentioned now actually in future, when you are going to access climate finance from GCF or climate investment fund, or even from the various donor agencies, you may need to provide certain assessment transfer change impact. So then this tool can generate the reports in a PDF or in, 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 in an Excel-based system, and you can go ahead. And you can also edit, delete assessments. That's also another possibility. Uh, the, as also Henning mentioned, the tool, you have guidance actually. Throughout the tool, there are so many guidance. And uh, there are small video clip like uh, one to uh, two minutes or even 30 seconds explaining how to use the tool. There are so many informations available. Depot informations are already available actually so that you can easily go through the tool and fill the necessary information. Assessment results are already in the database and you can also manage SDGs. Certain countries may have different priorities for the SDGs. So you can set the priorities for your country uh, for the SDGs. And then the assessment will come, uh, which is more specific for the country context. There are different types of users, different levels. Uh, so a country can create their own users. The different users have different access rights. And actually, this tool has also been developed that external people also can use, not only the country users. So that make it more user-friendly and accessible to many uh, several audience. And yeah, you can generate the re reports from the various uh, format, Excel format and uh, Word video format so that you can reuse for some other purposes later. I think that's all. Uh, there are four steps actually in the assessment. So I think you don't have much time, but uh, uh, first you need to collect an intervention. So someone has to create a climate action in the system and then do the assessment using the guided uh, steps in the, in the tool that I will be showing you later and you generate the results. If you want to compare the results between various tools, uh, that's also possible using the portfolio tool. With that, I will stop here and uh, see you later with the demo. Over to you, Hannah. Great, thank you um, both for the introduction to the toolkit. And I think um, <clears throat> really highlighting the different functionalities and features and different uses, I think of the, of the toolkit. 
So I can see that we've had a couple of questions that have come through um, in the Q&A. And um, one is, I think, particularly uh, related to this, um, uh, to the topic of, of the uses of the, of the toolkit. So um, this question is um, on how a NGO in Uganda um, could benefit from using um, a toolkit like this. Um, so I want to just hand over to Karen from uh, UNEP-CCC uh, to see if you can um, provide a quick uh, response to this. Yes. So um, it is open for all users who have an activity. We call it an intervention. So depending on what the purpose of the, um, the center, New Horizons Women's Education Center, as I read from the, from the question, um, and also pending what is the activity, um, you, could, you could use, I mean, to, the methodology will explain how the tool, what steps are in the, the tool, and then you would run through it to to see you can use it for for a um, ex ante stage for the for your activity when you are designing it. It's a uh, as it's it's very often required if you're seeking funding that you have to demonstrate the the transformational impact. But even if you're not seeking funding and you want to understand um, how could I make um my activity more have sort of have a system level impact beyond uh the, the the activity it could be issues like if you if you look at the the multi-level perspective have you have you talked to to um to government regarding that how the activity relates to policies have you reached out on the norms to to check how can i uh, amplify the, the sort of the impact of my activity by linking up to similar activities. So I think that the tool can give you some um, inspiration for for how to design your activities for more transformational impact. You can also use it uh, for ex post assessment to know the the impacts. So it's feasible to use it for an NGO. Great, thanks, Karen. Um, I can see a couple more questions, but I think it would be useful to go on to the next presentations because um, I think the next presentations will go into more depth on each of the individual tools um, to give a, a really good um, overview of what each of them uh, does. And then we can take a couple more questions um, at the end of the, the, the presentations. Um, so I'd like to now introduce the next speakers. Um, so you've heard that the toolkit is composed of several different tools um, and it's been developed as this collaborative effort with several different organizations. Um, so we brought a lot of different expertise uh, to each of the different tools. So firstly, Yannick Lucas, who is a project officer at UNEP CCC, will present on the general and portfolio tools. Erin Danford, who is a consultant at P Perspectives Climate Group, will present on the carbon market tool. Um, and then Francois Samut, who is the director of Carbon Limits, will present on the investment tool. So I'll first hand over the floor to you, Yannick. Thanks a lot, Hannah. Um, I hope you can all see my screen. Hello, everyone. Um, so I want to take you through the option of a portfolio assessment and the general interventions tool highlighting their specificities, but also what all tools have in common. So first, let us start at the end of the process, um, looking at what kind of results the toolkit will help produce. For this, I want to briefly come back to this overview we've seen earlier. The toolkit supports the user in generating a lot of detailed information across all of these dimensions. However, Let's rearrange this picture a little bit. For each intervention, the toolkit also helps to condense the expected transformational impact into a single picture, this one. After every assessment, the expected outcomes and the processes that facilitate a comprehensive transformation receive an aggregated score. And that way, the result can be easily and intuitively visualized by placing it as a dot in this matrix or heat map. 
this should not take away from the underlying complexity and nuances of the intervention, which will be always part of the assessment reports. However, this graph makes interventions easier to compare and conveys their transformational potential at a glance. If we zoom out to see the outputs from the toolkit and how the different tools relate to one another. So the carbon market investment and general tool are used to assess individual interventions one by one. They all produce a report that shows the detailed and aggregated assessment of the different dimensions of transformational change that we've just seen. These individual assessments you can then put together to a portfolio, allowing you to look at them in conjunction, make compre uh, comprehensive comparisons, um, and evaluate the set of activities more comprehensively. To help you decide at the beginning um, which of the tools best fits your needs, we put together these three guiding questions. But since you will hear much more about this from both my colleagues and me in the next few minutes, I will gloss over this one uh, for now. Just know that it's always accessible in the toolkit um, online whenever you need it. So let's dive into the general interventions tool and importantly, what it has in common with the carbon market and investment tools. The general tool serves as a kind of umbrella, um, which can be used for any type of intervention, really. The most common use case will likely be for government policies or projects um, which the for which the financial component um, is not as important. The structure is largely the same, but you find additional features specific to carbon markets and investment decisions in the other tools. These four components you see on the right, um, however, are present in all three of them. So let's start with the scope of the assessment. To provide context and transparency, the first user inputs will capture the boundaries of the assessment whether the invention, intervention is assessed uh, retrospectively or in advance, which sectors and regions are covered, how far we want to look into the future, and finally, how stakeholders will be involved in the assessment process. After that, we want to make sure that there's an explicit understanding of what the system transformation consists of. What does it look like? How is it expected to develop also in relation to the different stages of transformational change that we've seen earlier? And importantly, where does this particular intervention fit into this process? In addition to this transformational vision, as it's called in the methodology, um, we look at factors at what factors could inhibit this and how our intervention relates to or even directly tackles these barriers to transformational change within that system. In the actual assessment, for all characteristics that are seen as relevant for the intervention, the user assigns a score. This usually takes the form of, as we've talked about, a qualitative evaluation on a predefined scale, assessing the direction and degree or the estimated likelihood of an impact. This is done for all process characteristics, as well as mitigation, adaptation, and effects on selected sustainable development goals. To ensure transparency and increase the usefulness for working on these assessments also in teams, the user is asked to provide a brief justification for all inputs, with the option to also add um, background documents that support the respective assessment. Finally, after completing the previous steps, the results are immediately accessible within the toolkit. To make sharing easier, as Budika outlined earlier, a standardized PDF report can be generated just with one click. Both of these contain the results, including justifications and background, um, but also show the overall impact in a very simple way by locating the intervention on the familiar grid or heat map. Moving on to the portfolio tool. The purpose of this is to perform an assessment of the transformational impact of multiple interventions. For example, a set of different policies as part of nationally determined contributions under the Paris Agreement. The individual assessments that are pulled together um, can be performed with any of the three tools. 
general carbon market or investment. In addition to allowing for an easy side-by-side -side comparison, the portfolio tool also supports an aggregated view of all the greenhouse gas emissions that the set of interventions is expected to mitigate, and it helps you see um, how well they align with the priorities across all sustainable development goals within your country. Let's have a look at how this works. To show the alignment of interventions with the sustainable development priorities, we first need to establish what those are. I think we will likely all agree that all of the 17 sustainable development goals are important. However, some countries will put different emphasis on different goals. One way to go about it is to base it on the progress that has already been made towards achieving the targets of a certain SDG. If there's a lot more effort required, for example, it could make sense to assign a high priority. Using this categorization into high, medium, and low priorities for the sustainable development goals, the portfolio tool matches this to the impacts on these SDGs from the individual outcome assessments. Remember, an intervention can be assessed to, both, um, to have both negative and positive effects on selected SDGs, and they can vary in degrees from major to relatively minor impacts. In the resulting overview, we use green and red colors to illustrate the alignment in an easy way. Strong impacts on highly prioritized SDGs are shown with the darker shades and minor impacts on low priority goals in lighter shades. Let's have a look at an example. Here we see the impact of some intervention on a subset of six SDGs, ranging from minor to major, both positive and negative effects. Combined with the priorities from high to low that were assigned, we get this color-coded overview of how the impacts compare um, when taking the alignment with the country priorities into account. In the portfolio then, um, we of course see this alignment for all included interventions. While this cannot give ultimate clarity on which policies or projects should be pursued or abandoned, we can quickly identify potential problems or components of a particular intervention that we should take another more in-depth look at. Using this information can help the user to revise and refine their respective portfolio. Moving on to the aggregation of greenhouse gas emission reductions across the portfolio. While climate mitigation is just one of the outcome categories, greenhouse gas emission reductions are generally easier to quantify than, for example, contributions to climate adaptation or gender equality. So in addition to comparing the qualitative assessments of potentially transformational outcomes, the portfolio tool also provides a summary of annual emission reductions expected from all interventions. This does not replace an in-depth evaluation or modeling of emission reduction pathways, but it gives a first estimate and supports um, the comparison of multiple options contained in the portfolio. At the end, the report for um, the portfolio assessment follows the same logic as the ones for the other tools. It can be explored online or in a document and gives easily, easily understandable summaries as well as the assessment details. In addition, to the, in addition to what we have for the individual tools, the portfolio report provides a straightforward side-by-side -side comparison across the various process and outcome characteristics. It includes graphs that show which sectors and SDGs are most represented in the portfolio, and of course, a transformational change matrix, our heat map, that includes more than just one dot to give you the complete picture. And that's it from me. Uh, thanks a lot. And over to you, Erin, for more details on the carbon market tool. Great. Thank you, Yannick. I'll just wait a moment for the slides. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Erin Danford. I'm a consultant and carbon markets expert with Perspectives Climate Group, and I'll take you quickly through the carbon markets tool. So basic characteristics of the carbon market tool. We have, of course, the same goal as the other tools. 
which is to promote NDC target achievement and ambition raising towards net zero pathways, and of course, to promote sustainable development at the same time. The target users for the carbon market tool would be carbon market project and program developers. So that could be governments, financial institutions, private sector actors, and the tool is designed to be used for baseline and crediting systems. So that includes both Article 6 and the voluntary carbon market. You have the option at the beginning of the tool to select which crediting standard you're using. The purpose of the tool is to allow both a self-assessment of an intervention's transformative impacts, so just to be used for your own use, or also to enable reporting on those impacts. For example, you could do an ex-ante assessment to attract potential buyers with the transformational potential of your program. We needed a separate carbon markets tool because there are unique criteria that underpin transformative carbon market interventions, which wouldn't otherwise be covered in a general tool. So for example, the allocation of a share of mitigation outcomes to the host country or decreasing baseline emission coefficients over time. The tool can be used on its own or in combination with any of the other tools. So for example, as one component of the portfolio tool, or if there's a particular a particularly strong aspect of private investment in the carbon program, then you could also use the investment tool for that portion. As far as the structure of the carbon markets tool, we tried to keep the same basic structure and categories and indicators as the other tools to make it as user-friendly as possible. So we have in the beginning the assessment information with also some questions specific to carbon markets so for example, with methodologies are being used or which crediting standard. Then we have a section which is bespoke to the carbon markets tool, which is an environmental and social integrity precondition section. And I'll explain that in a moment. Then we have, of course, the transformational change criteria, which is aligned with the other tools and the results. And the results are also formatted in the same way so that you can compare the score of a carbon markets intervention to also a private investments intervention, for example. And another major change that we've made based on previous work on transformational change is also including adaptation as an additional feature with great assistance from UNFCCC there. So as I mentioned, um, we need a separate carbon markets tool because there are aspects of carbon markets which are really unique and can't be forgotten when we're looking at transformational change. And a major part of that is environmental and social integrity. So we decided to create an environmental and social integrity precondition section of the tool um, because the debate on integrity in carbon markets is only growing stronger. And there are a set of minimum preconditions that need to be considered before an activity can be considered transformational. So for example, if you have an activity which has very strong sustainable development benefits or a very large greenhouse gas mitigation outcome, but the activity is not truly additional, then we would argue that that isn't actually a transformational activity. So in our tool, all applicable preconditions need to be met before you'll get a score to be transformational. We have three main pillars here. That would be safeguards for environmental integrity. So these are the basic safeguards like different forms of additionality, and we see alignment, robust quantification of mitigation outcomes, then we have prevention of GHG emissions lock-in. So for example, that the intervention doesn't appear on a negative list and is also aligned with long-term low emission development strategies. And then of course, the basic prevention and avoidance of negative environmental and social impacts. This takes us then to the transformational change section, which is really the meat of the tool. And here we have the same processes and outcomes as the other tools but we have specific guiding questions that are specific to carbon markets. So under technology change, we focus on new and emerging technologies, high abatement costs, upscaling barriers to adoption, digitalized MRV. Then we have agents of change, such as promoting green entrepreneurship, low carbon coalitions, et cetera. It's incentives for change, such as a share of mitigation outcomes being allocated to the host country, limiting the crediting period, reducing the baseline emissions factor, and so on. 
And then we have norms and behavioral change, such as awareness raising, policies for low carbon practices, normalizing desirable practices. Then we have the same outcomes as the other tools, for example, greenhouse gas outcomes, SDG outcomes, and as I mentioned, we've also added adaptation co-benefits because we see this also as a major component of transformational change. One of the main um, lessons that I think we learned when developing the tool was uh, how to strike a balance between having a robust tool, which gives you a result which is really useful, but also a tool that is user-friendly and relies on data which is reasonably attainable. So in the end, we struck a balance, I think, between developing something that is robust but still user-friendly. We had a case study with our colleagues in Vietnam, which they'll speak more about, but this really assisted us in identifying areas where the tool could be consolidated, but also where additional explanation was necessary, where resources were necessary, or for example, where we could autofill data for you so that it's perhaps a bit less work. So we have a couple of changes to make this tool as flexible as possible. The intervention outcomes such as GHG, SCG, and adaptation impacts in all of the tools are, they only require qualitative answers. But because this data is available for carbon market um, interventions, you would have greenhouse gas emissions data, you would have the SDG impacts. We also allow quantitative um, assessment. So we provide guidance on how you can calculate quantitative impacts if you want to show a more robust assessment, for example, to a potential buyer. We also give the option to upload documents if you would like to provide evidence so here you're flexible in doing your own assessment where you just input your data, look at the score, and maybe this helps you change your activity, design it in a more transformational way, or you can decide to do a really quantitative assessment, include all of the evidence, and then have this PDF report which you can circulate to really show the transformational impact of your activity. So I hope you all use the tool and find also that you've struck a balance here that's useful, but also user-friendly for you. Thank you. Thanks, Erin. We'll just uh, invite Francois now to uh, present on the investment tool. I will do. Okay, thank you very much, Hannah. Um, so I will give you a quick overview to the investment tool, and, but just to highlight that a lot of the uh, aspects of the other tools that were presented uh, by Yannick and Erin uh, beforehand um, are relevant to the investment tool, so I don't want to duplicate certain aspects, so I will really just focus on uh, how the investment tool is to be used and uh, how it was developed and um, what kind of uh, questions are behind it. How, how does it um, manage to uh, calculate the uh, transformational change score at the end uh, of the assessment? So if we go to the uh, next one. So what are the characteristics of the investment tool? And what is the approach that we took? So the objectives of the tool and very specifically for the investment uh, tool is to assess the transformational impact of discrete, so single activities which are funded at least partially from the private sector through different types of funds, could be uh, loans, could be equity funding, could be um, a whole uh, list of different types of funding, but it's not the type of project that it just comes from the public budget. So there has to be a component of uh, private funding. Um, and the target group then is uh, the private sector, private sector project developers, investment funds, international financial institutional and uh, multinational uh, development banks, um, and allows them to uh, assess the expected or um, if it's a uh, exposed uh, assessment, the achieved transformational impact of a single investment or a single project or uh, a small portfolio of investment projects. Um, and this is the types, again, uh, a list of the types of investment and investment vehicles uh, that can uh, be um, reviewed uh, or the, the, the investments that are at the base of the projects. Um, and the types of investments could be a government, private uh, sector, IFIs and others, as long as there is this private sector component in the investment. Um, the approach is based on the ICAP TC methodology, 
and follows quite closely the stepwise approach uh, that I've described in the methodology in the specific sections five to 11, which uh, Karen described. Um, and uh, what we'll uh, look at is how the assessment of uh, the impact on process characteristics and the outcomes, how they are assessed by the user uh, in order to provide a score of transformational impact. Um, as Erin uh, also highlighted with the carbon market tool, this tool can also be used in combination with the other tools where relevant or it can be used on its own. Uh, but it was also important is to differentiate uh, in particular the investment tool from the carbon markets tool um, and in a way where not to use the investment tool. So it's important that the investment uh, tool is really used where there isn't any uh, access, let's say, to carbon markets. So any type of project that will not lead to a transaction of mitigation outcomes or other types of emission reductions that are covered by a particular carbon, carbon market. In that case, obviously the carbon market uh, tool can be used. Okay, so you've seen this a few times now, but just to highlight to you, uh, what are the process characteristics and, and outcomes? So the process characteristics, there are in total uh, 12 of them. Um, and what we've done in the next slide is to uh, undertake then the assessment of the, pro of the process characteristics. So as I mentioned, there are 12 process characteristics. And for each one, the user of the tool is provided with a guiding question or guiding questions, which will allow them to provide a likelihood score for each characteristic. So what is the transformational uh, impact or um, a score, as it were, for that specific uh, uh, process characteristic? Um, there's a number of guiding questions for each process characteristic. Um, and these guiding questions can be two guiding questions up to six guiding questions. And for example, if we use the um, the, uh, re the research and development uh, process characteristic, then the type of question is uh, straightforward. Does, does it have a local R&D uh, component? And then explaining that kind of uh, question, what is meant by that? Is there a, a collaboration with local engineers, scient local scientists, uh, other institutions? Uh, does the intervention have significant training components? So again, uh, explain that let that question in more detail. Is there an investment in technical training? Is there capacity building? Is there an educational program related to this uh, intervention? Uh, and in addition to these questions and the explanation, there are also examples. So uh, when you hover the uh, mouse over the uh, question, it gives you an example of what we could mean by this collaboration with local engineers or collaboration with scientists. So trying to make it as accessible as possible, make the guiding questions as clear as possible by providing this explanation and providing these uh, examples, the user should be able to understand uh, what the question is about and how it relates to their project. Um, and the, the examples and the, the questions are very much linked to the trans transformational change methodologies, the methodology and the references that are used and at the basis of this methodology. So a lot of these uh, questions are, uh, are relate or mirror the transformational uh, change methodology, which Karen uh, explained. Um, and there, in total, then we have 48 questions. As I said, each of these 12 process characteristics has two to six uh, questions. And in total, there are uh, 48 guiding questions. So based on these questions, there is quite a range of questions. It gives a good uh, assessment of the, the impact, the transformational impact with respect to process characteristics uh, due to this um, quite uh, range of questions, range of guiding questions, which the user has to, to answer. Okay, next one. And then for the assessment of outcomes, the approach is uh, slightly more quantitative. Uh, so the user is asked to score the transformational impact of the activity based on the volume of emission reductions uh, as a percentage of global emissions or national or sector level emissions. Um, and also what is the sustained nature of the outcome, what is the duration of the intervention, 15 years, 5 to 15 years, and so on. And again, based on these uh, aspects, this provides a score 
of the um, of the um, outcomes related to this intervention. And for the assessment of the outcomes, SDGs and outcomes adaptation, the same approach as the portfolio has been adopted. And as uh, Yannick made an excellent presentation on how uh, that is done, then again, in order to uh, have some consistency between uh, the tools, we have adopted as well the same approach um, and the same approach with respect to adaptation, as Erin mentioned, that's also part of the carbon market tools and the other market, the other tools. Yeah, um, this is also the same approach has been taken. So there is consistency. So there is overall consistency where possible between the different tools, but obviously the different tools need to reflect uh, the audience and the users that are going to uh, use the tool. And then very, and then finally, I won't go into um, the the next one. Um, is going uh, yeah, uh, the just a final note uh, that again, as for the carbon market tools and as for the other tools, the um, tool was tested uh, on a specific project in Vietnam, and the speakers from the VNIC will uh, highlight uh, how they did that and uh, provided us with the feedback so there could be some final tweaks made to uh, all the tools, including the investment tool. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Bonsoir. And also to Erin and, uh, and Yannick for um, taking us through uh, in a little bit more detail on the on the different tools. So I think Erin, you particularly highlighted this uh, topic of balance uh, that uh, that we um, have considered in the, in the development of the toolkit. And uh, I think this was something that was really important throughout that uh, we wanted to have a toolkit that was not only technically uh, robust and, and rigorous, but also intuitive and easy to use and um, and and that could facilitate really independent uh, application. Um, so I'd like to invite Budika now to take us through the software interface um, because this is where we see um, all of those great functions of the usability uh, come through. So please over to you, Budika. Okay, thank you, Hannah. And, uh... I uh, thanks again, I think, for Yannick uh, and Erin and uh, Prankois for making uh, you know great explanation about each tool. I think that makes very easy for me. Uh, so I think uh, most of you might be in the same situation like me. Uh, you might have understood that uh, how complex the process of you know uh, assessing the transnational change impact, right? So. Now, I think, believe me, in the tool, actually, this all these requirements, everything is, has been embedded. And I think now some of you might be thinking, of what is process of change? What is outcome of change? What are the agents, technologies? Don't worry about all these things, right? So now, if you go to the tool, if you really want to assess the transnational change impact of your climate action, it can be building 100 megawatt wind project or small solar cook store program or whatever. So now if you want to know the, how to do the transnational change impact, you can easily go through. You don't want to worry about this, you know, uh, technical terms. Uh, everything has been simplified in the tool. Uh, and uh, if you go to the tool uh, here, you will see the, uh, for example, in the dashboard, you will see basically the each tool, uh, how many uh, actions, interventions have been assessed using each tool. And then here you will also see the, the green is more how, like, you know, how much uh, transfer change impact you have for certain uh, intervention. And the red means actually like you are less likely to have transfer change impact or you don't have at all. Green means that you are going to have. So how many interventions have higher transfer change impact, right? So then if you go to the, uh, the, the here you will see the each uh, tool actually you will have a quick overview about the, in name of the intervention, this is the climate action actually assessment period and likelihood of transformation. So it's like, you know, there's between possible, less likely or more likely and outcome score, whether it's moderate, high. So it's like a, in certain situation, you will not have like, you know, um, uh, Erin mentioned actually, if the climate action does not meet the environment precondition, you can't do the transfer change impact. It's only for the carbon market, right? Then you will see that, you know, how, how which, Climate interventions pass the environment integrity test, which don't so there's information. And this in the heat map, you will see actually which uh, climate actions, which interventions have the higher, uh, you know, the transfer change impact, right? The green means higher transfer change impact. And then the, the orange and towards red means actually uh, no transfer change impact. 
and you can also have a quick idea about uh, how this has been aligned with the SDGs. So Yannick show has already so Yannick has already shown 17 SDGs. Actually, here you will also see actually how it will align with your SDGs uh, in, in nationally, right? Which sectors uh, are representing in these uh, actions are also being shown. I saw there is a one question about you know how this is aligned. I mean, how what how you can use this for the BTR? Because if you go to the BTR, actually in one of the sections, you know, in the CTF tables, you have to also report about the other indicators, not only GIG indicators, other indicators. So actually, you can use how the uh, the, the you know this this climate actions are aligned with the SDGs and what are the transport change impact of this climate action can be you know included uh, under the uh, BTR uh, CTF tables as separate indicators actually from from this one. So each uh, you can you, each action actually you can have a look and you have the overview for the each uh, tool uh, about the climate actions, uh, investment in general, and if someone wants to know about the summary about the, all the tools, right? That's also available here, right? And if you can also select one tool actually, so you can just go and select one of the tool, uh, one of the actions, and then get the information for that. Or if you want to select a portfolio, which is a combination of several interventions, that also you can take. So I'm not going to spend more time, but just to show you, uh, you know, key features and. You can also create uh, institutions. You know, for example, if you are a country admin, if you want to create institution to gather information or to allow them to submit, uh, you know, intervention or conduct assessment, you can create institutions and then you can manage institutions. You can uh, also create users. As, well, as I mentioned to you previously, you have a different kind of users. It can be country admin, it can be country user, external user. You can create and the different users will have different access rights. This is also a very important one actually, managing the SDG priorities because each country will have a different priorities for the SDGs, right? So here you can, as a country admin, you go to the tool and then you can manage the SDG priorities. Maybe some countries, uh, uh, zero hunger has a low uh, priority, right? While the gender equality has high priority. In, in, in another country, it can be zero hunger has a very high priority and the clean water has a very low priority. So depending on what priority you have, you can easily, you know, select. And most important thing, as Henning also mentioned at the beginning uh, in his remarks, that uh, each tool actually you have a, like a short video or you know uh, introduction. I mean, for example, if you click this video, you can uh, listen to how to use this particular function, right? So like a very short videos, it can be a one minute, it can be a two minute or so thirty second, right? Priorities. So it's like a, you you already have a short videos explaining how to use that one. That's what I mentioned that even if you don't know at anything about transformational change, don't worry. This tool will guide you how to do the calculation with all the steps, right? And the, this is the most important thing actually creating an intervention because when you are going to do a, you know, assessing transfer change impact, you need to have an intervention. So it can be a climate action or it can be any action actually that you need to create. And again, uh, when with regard to the BTR, since there was a question actually, this is also another place that you can also use this tool to collect the climate action across the country and consolidate because that's needed to be reported under the BTR, right? So that's also another feature that you can use in, in some context. But anyway, so when you are going to create a climate action, so here you have, uh, you know, definition what is intervention, there's some explanation is there, again, video is explaining how to create intervention and how to fill each element, right? You need the name, sectors, you can assign institution and who is proposing this intervention geographical coverage and sectors, level of implementation there are. And uh, the, you will also see actually not all the inputs are mandatory, right? In the star mark, you will see the mandatory fields, right? And there are some other additional information that are collecting. And if you are not quite sure what to be filled, you can go and to this I, I can actually understand, okay, what I really have to fill here, right? So that those information, uh, you can also upload some reports that can be useful. So once you fill it, you can submit, it will go to the you know, database. Uh, of the country and then you can download and one of the thing actually I also want to mention that this is a free software iCAT will be maintaining and if you want uh, you know that uh, iCAT will create a separate account for each country and all each institutions and then you will have your own space in the iCAT central system but if you wish to install it for the country or you know uh, for institution then you can reach to iCAT and then iCAT will help you to set up it accordingly. Uh, yeah, so you can also manage uh, the interventions. Once you add the intervention, if you want to see uh, the intervention, what whether there are any changes to be done or you know anything that you can go and you can edit the intervention actually. So it is once you submit doesn't mean that okay, 
I can't modify. No, this is you can modify actually because there are some other situation like, you know, this is tracking. So you have some limitation, but here you can edit the climate actions at any of the time uh, and then uh, you can modify it as and, as and when you need. And then uh, when you want to do an assessment, transform change impact of the intervention. So here you go here and then let's say that there are four tools, you know, uh, Yannick, uh, Erin, and the Frank uh, explained about there are four tools. You are not quite sure actually which tools we use to assess the transfer chain impact of your climate action. You know the action, right? So then again, the, this will guide you, tool will guide you how to select, you know, there are, there are some info which explain. But even if you don't know this information, don't worry, then you will have a, there will be three questions asked by the tool. And then it will tell you, okay, you go and do the assessment from this particular tool, right? So do you want to evaluate transfer change impact of set of multiple intervention? If you say yes, it will direct you to the portfolio tool, right? And then if you uh, if you say that no, okay, then it will ask another question. Okay, select intervention uh, and then you select the intervention, whatever, and then you assessment type. And then it will ask you, okay, is it something related to the carbon market, right? If you say yes, it will go to the carbon market assessment. If you say no, then there is another question which will be asking about whether it's something to do with the finance intervention, like Frank mentioned about, you know, whether it can be equity or loan or some grant funding. And then if you say yes, it will direct you to the investment uh, tool, right? If not, it will go to the general tool. All the actions which are not part of the finance investment and the carbon market will go to the in a uh, general general tool and then uh, so when you go and do the assessment actually you can just go there and then you know it's, it's common there are steps are very common in most of the uh, you know tools but there are tool specific uh, questions also that will be asked but again guidance are there uh, you know small videos are there you can select the intervention that you have already submitted and then you can identify the activities assessment type whether ex ante or exposed and international national so you select all these things and the time boundary and then um, it you have to also set up the vision stage and some inputs have to be provided here and then it will be go to the uh, main assessment section so once you uh, go to the assessment actually the some assessment you can also say most of the assessment you can also save in the uh, in progress you know you can do the assessment partially and then you can go so i go to the one of the partially complete one just to show you the the next steps actually for example once you at the initial steps uh so this is yeah this is basically the uh carbon market one and that's why you have a specific section in the environmental integrity other tools does not have that one it's only the carbon market as the environmental integrity related concerns if you answer is no to any of these things you can't uh, you know uh, go it's, it's like uh, you you have to basically uh, accept uh, all this, uh, you know, uh, comply with the, all these NRI integrity related questions, preconditions, then only you can go to the next. So this is more or less common. The sections are more or less common for all the uh, four tools, but only the, it will, uh, the, the, the certain questions can be tool specific. It will be changed, right? Process of change, technology, what is stage is the technology, which is R&D or is adaptation level, adoption level, what is the scale and so and so will be asked and you can also provide, the, there are drop downs actually, you can also have a guiding questions, you know, explaining each point, you can provide a justification, right, and the, so how to fill these informations are already here actually, for example, if you go here, the adoption relevant or not, you have three answers actually in the drop down list, but you don't know what to be responded, then you can just go here and see, okay, relevant means so, uh, possible relevant means this one, so explanation is already there. Right? You will not get lost in, in terms of, you know, assessing the transform change because always you have some guidance throughout the tool, right? So it's like that. And then once you are done, you save it, then results will be generated, right? For each climate action, you will get the result generated. And then when you go to the assessment of results, actually, you will see the assessment results for all these, uh, you know, like, for example, uh, for each uh, intervention, you can see the results like this period and everything and the process change output will be coming in a particular table and then you have certain values because they are actually you select some options, but then it will be converted into some quantitative figures here so that it can be uh, going as well. So here the, you get the final output in terms of category weight and so on. So GHG impact also, we are not assessing the GHG impacts here, but the GHG emissions is reported here and then you can get the GHG impact of the particular intervention also here, a sustainable impact and alignment uh, SDG outcome. You can understand what how it is, how much SDG areas are impacted and alignment with the SDG areas and so and so can be reviewed here. 
So all the output can be seen here, but final output will be the, this heat map where it will show where will be the transversal change impact of this particular intervention. Whether it's a green area, which means very high transversal change impact, orange is like a medium, and red means no transversal change. You can download this in the PDF or Excel sheet, and then you can use it for any purpose that you want, right? So it's basically the whole the, the assessment out uh, assessment results, and you can get, once you generate the report report that you later you can download. Or report will be automatically saved, and then you can use it for any other purpose later. So audit log is there. So whoever log for the tool, everything will be log, and then you know actually who is entering the data, who is producing the report, who is changing the anything in the country ad, country ad, any any system. So country admin is the highest level of user. He will be able to see all the actions going on. Uh, is transparently can be reviewed everything in the in the system, and you can reset the password and log out and so on. So I think I will stop here. Uh, but you understand that providing a detailed explanation in 10 minutes is not, is not easy. But uh, uh, I hope you got a rough idea. But most important thing I want to communicate again that uh, even you don't know anything about transfer change impact, but you want to do a uh, transfer change impact assessment of intervention, you can do it because everything is here in the tool. Guidance is here. And with that, I stop and give the floor back okay. to uh, yeah, thank you, Badika. Um, so I'd like to introduce the final speaker for today, uh, Hien Dao, who is a project manager at the Vietnam Energy and Environment Consultancy, VNEEC, to share some experiences on applying um, the, the toolkit and the software. So over to you, Hien. Yes. Hi, hi everyone. Yes, um, I, I had opportunity to uh, to test a uh, carbon market tool and investment tool from two case study in Vietnam. Uh, next, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, uh, one case study in the investment tool is the uh, in the solar power uh, stated in operation, uh, in operation and um. Assessment time is X and T, and carbon market tool in, uh, is for case study about EV vehicle project. Uh, Stated project is in uh, implementation, and uh, both the case study is uh, uh, is conducted in X, X and T assessment. So uh, in in figure you you can see the the result of the uh, of the case study uh, um, about the assessment of transformation or chain. Uh, yeah, so next, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, through the using the tool kit tools, uh, I think the tool is very useful and practical for the business um, to uh, to assess the uh, extent of transformation affected or achieved uh, for the assumability uh, of the tool, uh, I think the tool is friendly and easy for user. And the the question offers an in-depth question to uh, ensure a comprehensive assessment and uh, as well as uh, provide explanation for some complex term as um, however i i think the target you should have a foundational understanding uh, to to understanding of uh, uh, of the term and uh, understanding on a country policy on climate change or development of pension state that strategy related to action and uh, the you using the um, through the using for the private sector for the busy need uh, i think the the tools support uh, support carefully busy need to assess the extent of transformation affected or achieved and uh, help business review transformation vision as well as any barrier 
uh, such as technical barrier, social barrier, and political barrier, etc., to the intervention. And, uh, and then the business can improve their performance and prepare for future challenges. Uh, uh, especially for the carbon market tool, uh, I, I can the um, uh, I think the carbon market tool can use as a, a quick screen tool to determine uh, whether the the intervention meet pre conduct condition for realization of a carbon credit project. Uh, if a project in, um, intend to develop under the carbon credit mechanism or standard. And so uh, they, they, they are some uh, my comment or my uh, uh, um, um, emotion to you the the tune. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> for, okay. for the extra please the tune helpful the helpful tune. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Ian. And um, also, I think particularly highlighting those uh, uses of the tool for the private sector and, and businesses. Um, <clears throat> so now that we've gone through uh, all the presentations for the webinar, I, we have some time for um, answering some questions. Um, so I wanna have a look, we have some questions that are particularly related to, to data. So in particular, looking at uh, what, what happens if there are data gaps, um, and also in terms of the country level data that needs to be preloaded uh, to the tool. So um, I want to hand over to Badika and Karen um, to see their thoughts on this. So in particular, looking at um, what to do with this data gaps in terms of the entry that needs to be put in and what kind of uh, country level data needs to be preloaded. And I think we've, we've heard also about the, the alignment to, S, S, to country SDGs as well. So um, if you could provide some thoughts, uh, Karen and Budika on those questions. I can start with the data gaps. Um, the tool provides for a qualitative assessment so I think it's particularly for the carbon market tool where there's when data is available or quantification, and it typically is because you have to quantify the GHG impacts of your mitigation action to, to get a price for what carbon finance can you attract. So when, when data is available for quantification, you provide it. For the more qualitative assessment, it's... Um, it's it's um, okay to have expert judgment. The more documents you upload as supporting for your uh, score and the expert judgment, the more robust the assessment is. But it is exactly qualitative, uh, which means it's late, less um, demanding on the, the, the data available because it's um, more the intention of Enabling learning, as we saw from the Vietnam case, well, there was one um, intervention that was not transformational. So th this is something that you then that that you then learn from using the tool, raising questions that make you think. Could I enhance the design in some ways? So it's it's actually not that demanding in terms of uh, data availability. But the more you have, the the better that you upload it. But that's why it's qualitative because we know if you if we were asking for quantitative information, it would probably be quite difficult to to do. Great, thanks, Karen. Badika, um, could you come in as well? And I think there's also a question just to add to that um, on the possibility of import from Excel for the data. So you could answer those questions. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Anna and Karen. And yeah, uh, I maybe I will start the last point actually in terms of importing. As Karen mentioned, uh, the, the here actually we are going to generate the uh, transmissional change impact of intervention in a sort of like a, a quantitative way, right? It is not a, uh, sorry, it's, it's a qualitative, qualitative output. It's not a quantitative output actually, right? So the, the therefore we are uh, if you look at the assessment section also like there are many questions which have been asked 
and then uh, generate a quantitative output in a heat heat map. So we are not this is this tool is not very data intensive, right? So you are not going to collect a lot of data, right? Yeah. For example, GHG impact, the tool is not going to assess the GHG impact, right? So if the GHG impact has been assessed somewhere, then you can feed it into this tool in order to assess the transfer change impact. So therefore, when, uh, with regard to uploading the data from Excel data, so it's not uh, possible because uh, you have to select the data from drop down or you have to enter certain inputs, right? So this is not a quantitative assessment that we are doing here. And uh, uh, with regard to, I think there was a question as Hannah also mentioned that country specific data, right? Whether we have uploaded any country specific data into system. Uh, as I mentioned to you that uh, once, uh, if, if the countries are interested or if the institutions are interested, so they can reach to ICAT and then ICAT, uh, we will be able to upload some country specific information, right? That can be embedded for that country specific platform, right? that will be definitely possible and oh, with regard to the last one on the sdg uh, the sdg i think that's also one of the good feature here uh, i again i also want to emphasize that even for the sdg impacts we are not going assessing the sdg impact quant uh, quantitatively right so we are just uh, collecting how the climate action or this particular intervention will align with the uh, sustainable development goals right and uh, what kind of sustainable development goals are, are, are supporting those climate action right it's just the uh, the alignment and the and the and, and the supporting but not calculations actually i hope that answer yeah. thanks great thanks Badika. um we also have a question about the use of the carbon market tool uh for countries engaging in red plus um Maybe Erin, um, I'll just hand over to you to answer that question. Sure, yes, the tool can also be used for Red Plus. Um, you can select at the beginning of the assessment what sector your intervention is under and LULUCF is included there. And it's also marked throughout the tool which um, questions are specific to Article 6. So yes, it would also be applicable for Red Plus. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I think we might close the questions for now. Um, I can see that there's still a couple more, but um, what we'll do is we will get the speakers to um, answer those questions and then email them um, to everyone who has registered for the webinar. I will also um, highlight that there'll be a recording of this webinar that will be available um, as well. Um, and if you are interested in applying the Transformational Change Toolkit, um, please feel free to get in touch with us at ICAT. Also, um, we'll have a QR code at the end of this where you can um, have a look at the page on the ICAT website um, and we can um, discuss with you um, on uh, on how you can implement the, the toolkit in your countries or, or even um, for your organization. Um, so with that, I want to hand over to Henning uh, for some closing remarks. Thank you, Thank you very much, Hannah, and then uh, many thanks to uh, all the speakers. Uh, I think we've had uh, an excellent uh, uh, set of presentations, and I hope you all have seen how powerful this tool can be. Um, um, I, I have understood from the questions that there are very different uh, interests uh, uh, among the audience. Um, the tool really is directed uh, at both at government users and uh, at uh, private sector or non-governmental users. Um, so, uh, for of course, the, it all uh, has to be seen within the context of the Paris Agreement and they are uh, focused on advancing NDC implementation. Um, so that's really the use case that we had in mind. And then, of course, for government users, that means uh, engaging uh, stakeholders, uh, developing an uh, implementation plan, uh, and making sure that the policies and measures um, that uh, the government considers or has put in place actually have the transformational uh, impact that uh, is needed in order uh, to uh, address 
uh, climate change from a national perspective. That is something that then also uh, needs to be reported in, in the BTR, as, as Budika explained. And um, um, table five of the BTR, for instance, highlights um, the assessment of policies and measures uh, for the implementation of the NDC and here um, the uh, transformational change uh, impact uh, as well as the impact on sustainable development uh, objectives can be recorded. But this should be very much of interest uh, also to private sector actors that want to engage on the carbon market and we've heard how that can be done and to investors uh, that want to um, assess and then document and demonstrate uh, how their um, interventions um, are transformational. Uh, so this uh, climate finance uh, perspective is, is very critical. And of course, when you talk about the carbon market, then the important link to engaging uh, with Article 6 uh, is also then a linkage between the private sector and the government actors. So I, I hope we've got a little bit of a taste of how uh, useful the tool can be. Um, I think the best a way of finding out whether it is actually useful for you is to try it. And so we, I want to encourage you to actually get into the tool uh, uh, and uh, apply it. Um, please give us feedback if you are applying it. If you have questions, do contact us. But And if you have uh, applied it, and uh, we would really be very appreciative if you could share results with us. We would then also be happy to, to help you make those results more visible and, and um, uh, invite you to ICAT uh, events uh, to, to showcase some of the work that you have done. For countries, I want to reiterate that ICAT is uh, available to support countries. So if, if you want to use uh, if you want to assess transformational change impacts of policies and measures that you're either planning or policies and measures that you have already in place, then please uh, contact us and uh, we can discuss how um, to support uh, the work in, in your country. Um, so we hope that all of this has convinced you of, of uh, um, the importance of assessing transformational change. We certainly all want to move in the same direction. And this is a tool uh, on the way. And we look forward to hearing many uh, success stories like we've heard from Vietnam on, on uh, applying the tool and uh, making uh, interventions as uh, impactful as possible. Thank you again for your participation and many thanks once more to the speakers. Back to you, Hannah. Great. Thanks, Henning. Um, and yeah, just to reiterate again, thank you so much to the speakers uh, for their presentations today. Thank you all for joining us and for your interest, I think, in, in transformational change as well. You'll see a QR code now on your screen. Um, you can scan that and, uh, and you'll be directed uh, to the uh, web page um, for the Transformational Change Toolkit. Uh, just to highlight, this is a web-based toolkit, so um, you don't need to install it. There's no installation needed, um, so it's all web-based. Um, but please do get in touch with us um, if you'd like to apply it. I mean, we're very interested in, in supporting you uh, in doing this. So with that, um, I'd like to close the webinar now and say um, a very have a very nice day um, for those of you who have a day in front of them, um, or otherwise, we hope to see you at another uh, ICAT event. Thank you.